Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Bitter Pill. So today I wanted to talk about the recent death of West U.S.-backed Russian dissident Alexei Navalny and Western reactions to it. Uh, especially, I want to focus on that of um, longtime a radical activist and current independent political candidate Cornell West to his death uh, because I found it extremely problematic, not only what he said, but his reaction to being criticized over it. So what I want to do is, first of all, uh, just briefly talk about what Cornell West said and then talk some about who Navalny actually was and why he is not someone worthy of anyone's uh, support or really, you know, other than sympathy for the uh, his family for their loss, you know, not worthy of sympathy either. Uh, and then I want to uh, go into more depth about Cornell West's reaction both to Navalny's death itself and to his being criticized for his reaction and why I think it says about him as a person and a political candidate. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I think highly of Dr. West in a lot of ways. And, you know, until recently, I supported his candidacy along with that of Dr. Jill Stein. But, you know, he, he's done some things that led me to reevaluate that. So anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at what uh, Cornell West said regarding uh, Alexei Navalny, the Russian U.S.-backed dissident who recently died at this, of, at this point, unknown causes uh, while in a Russian prison for uh, his conviction on fraud and uh, various other charges. <clears throat> so Cornell said, my prayers are with the precious family of the courageous Russian pr political prisoner, the late Alexei Navalny, just as I pray for my dear brothers, Mumia Abu Jamal, Iman Jamil Abdullah Alamin, Leonard Peltier, uh, etc. Uh, free all political prisoners under cruel and unjust uh, systems of oppression. Okay, and so for reasons that we'll get into, uh, he got massively ratioed on this tweet, as you can see there. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll start off by just saying that it looks to me like Cornell West doesn't really understand who Navalny was, which I'll get into some details on that uh, later. Uh, but briefly, Navalny was, and we have ironclad evidence of this, a Western intelligence asset who really played a similar role in Russian politics as Juan Guaido did in uh, Venezuelan politics. Juan Guaido being the uh, person who uh, the U.S. declared was president of Venezuela, despite his never having you know, run for that political office. And, uh, you know, like Guaido, who had you know, has no real support in Venezuela other than from wealthy people, um, Alexei Navalny had something like 2% uh, support in uh, polls regarding, I believe it was regarding whether people uh, thought he should be president. Um, where's Vladimir Putin? Uh, the current president uh, and longstanding president of Russia uh, ha has extremely high p 
polling numbers, roughly twice, twice the uh, public support as Joe Biden has. So anyway, <clears throat> um, you know, people were pissed off at Cornell West, uh, not only because he um, didn't seem to understand who Navalny actually was, you know, that he wasn't just you know, a garden variety political dissident, uh, you know, courageously protesting against an oppressive system or whatever, but he was somebody who um, was backed, as I'll get into in detail in a little while, by uh, Western uh, governments, um, you know, directly received funding from the National Endowment for Democracy or uh, organizations associated with him did, uh, as well as British uh, sources of funding, uh, and you know the, uh, the he was really part of the project undertaken by the West ever since uh, the 1990s, when the Soviet Union collapsed, of trying to uh, subjugate uh, uh, Russia, trying to uh, you know, turn Russia into a Western puppet, or um, you know, dismember it, and uh, steal its resources or whatever, uh, as the West uh, pretty much did in the 1990s when Boris Yeltsin was president. And they have no longer been able to do that since Vladimir Putin has been president, which is exactly why uh, the U.S. and its allies are pissed off that Putin is president. And, you know, whatever uh, criticisms you may have of Vladimir Putin, and I have many, uh, you know, it's just a fact that he has um, you know, used Russian resources for the benefit of the Russian people, even though Russia is a capitalist state with, you know, a uh, wealthy elite and so forth. Uh, nonetheless, anyway. Um, so... <laughs> So as the title says, uh, Cornell West stepped in poo by tweeting this and didn't clean his shoe, uh, meaning he has not taken back what he said or, you know, not in any way uh, overtly modifies his views and, in fact, has uh, attacked people who criticized him for this, as well as other people. We'll get into that later. Um <laughs> Some people have argued, uh, like uh, Compton J from the Revolutionary Black Network, that actually uh, Cornell West does this intentionally. He periodically repeats establishment talking points so he doesn't become an outcast from uh, the um, professional managerial class, which is uh, CJ's term for the petty bourgeoisie. Um, you know, so, uh, Cornell, as you probably know, periodically gets interviewed by mainstream media, which uh, most prominent leftists do not. Um, but as CJ uh, also pointed out, uh, there was a segment on MSNBC, and I don't have it called up. I don't, don't have time to show it to you because I'm trying to make a short video today. Uh, a segment on NBC made a similar comparison to that made by Cornell West. Michael McFall compared Navalny to Nelson Mandela, among others, uh, in an interview on MSNBC. Um, so, so maybe that's why he got the idea to how he got the idea to compare Navalny to uh, Mumia Jamal, Abu Jamal, and other uh, U.S. political prisoners, which. You know, that comparison really upset a lot of people because you know, he did like, you know, um, people like Mamiya Abu Jamal and Leonard Peltier, uh, as far as I'm concerned, are patriots because they're fighting for justice in the United States. Uh, Mamiya was a, a member of the Black Panthers. Leonard Peltier, of course, was part of the American Indian movement. They were prominent uh, political activists in the uh, 70s. Um, and Navalny, on the other hand, uh, as we'll uh, discuss in more detail later, was a traitor. So it's just an offensive comparison. 
Um, I should also mention that uh, you know some people who um, maybe you wouldn't at all expect. Uh, well, I mean, you might not expect Cornell West to have done this either, but also uh, Julian Assange's wife, Stella Assange. Uh, and I don't believe I have her tweet called up here. Uh, it won't take time the time to look for it. Uh, Stella Assange, uh, you know, although she didn't make this sort of uh, comparison, uh, she also said something to the effect of, uh, um, you know, it was, uh, let me just, because I don't want to try and guess what she said. Um, here we go. Utterly devastating news. Navalny has died in prison. He was only 47. Had he not been in prison, he would be alive. Navalny was an opposition figure, but his investigative journalism exposed the corruption of the ruling elites in Russia. Um, I feel for his wife, uh, Yuli, and their two children, uh, etc. Condolences to his friends and family. Well, um, yeah, I just think that it's likely that she and also um, that Cornel West just didn't really understand who Navalny was. And, you know, if it, you know, even someone in her position, the wife of uh, the world's most famous political prisoner, uh, isn't necessarily going to follow every single uh, significant uh, political event happening on the planet. Um, so, yeah, I, I can, I can uh, forgive her for not really understanding who Navalny was. Um, I have a little more problem with Cornell West saying what he said, including his comparison of Navalny to uh, other political prisoners and especially his um, refusal to uh, give any sort of uh, substantive response to criticism for that view. Um, so anyway. Uh, I guess, you know, still, I would say, uh, neither one of them should have said anything about this when they didn't know what the hell they were talking about. Um, you know, if you don't know, uh, who someone is, uh, you really have no business expressing a fucking opinion about them or about, in this case, their death. Uh, so anyway, um, I want to take a closer look at what we know about who Navalny is from uh, more reliable sources of information than the uh, mainstream media that I'm guessing um, people like Cornell West got their information about Navalny from. Uh, then I'll return to discussing West's comment about Navalny's death uh, and reactions to his comment. Um, and then you know, his problematic response to being criticized over this and what all this uh, says about him. Uh, so first, let's turn to um, one of many articles I came across, uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, who uh, Alexei Navalny is. Okay, and... I got this highlight program that's kind of annoying because it, it turns itself off every time you, um, you know, <laughs> are offline for a while, so it doesn't show your highlights. But anyway, um, this is one of several articles, and I'll put links to this and some other ones in the video, uh, giving some details about uh, who Alexei Navalny was. Uh, so the title is Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, a key prop in a psychological warfare operation designed to bring down Vladimir Putin. And as you might guess, uh, the answer by the author Jeremy Kuzminov, Kuzmarov, who wrote this in March of 2021 is yes. Uh, so Navalny, uh, has had some health issues of uh, unknown origin for a while. Uh, back in 2018, um, he got very ill and had to go to the hospital. And uh, it was alleged by the U.S. and uh, other Western governments 
that he was poisoned by Russia. They, they were attempting to poison him with a nerve agent called uh, Novichok. Um, but you know, again, the reality is uh, that um, you know, he wasn't that significant a figure in Russian uh, politics, and uh, there certainly was nothing to be gained by the Russian government for uh, you know, poisoning Navalny. Um, you know, if uh, like if they didn't kill him, you know, what purpose would uh, it serve just to poison him? Uh, you know. Uh, so if they had wanted to kill him, they would have done something else. Um, and, you know, he, he just wasn't some, someone who they were that bothered by, uh, given you know, his uh, scant approval rating. Um, so Navalny was arrested uh, in January of uh, twenty. 21, I guess, um, when he returned from being in Germany uh, following treatment for poisoning with what many Western countries say was a military grave nerve agent. Um, okay, so maybe I got the uh, year wrong about when this alleged poisoning took place. He was jailed on February 2nd for parole violations resulting from an earlier embezzlement conviction and sent to a penal colony on March 1st of 2021. Russia's attempt to kill Mr. Navalny follows an alarming pattern of chemical weapons used by Russia, a senior U.S. official told reporters, referring to the you know, alleged, um, because they never really proved it, March 2018 poisoning of former Russian military intelligence officer Sergei Skripal uh, with a military-grade nerve agents. In announcing the new sanctions, the Biden administration declassified an intelligence finding that the FSB orchestrated the poisoning against Navalny on August 20th, 2020. Um, and the UN Special Rapporteur on Extraditional and Summary Arbitrary Executions uh, um, or, or two people associated with it, uh, Agnes Kalmard and Irene Khan. Oh, she's the uh, Special Rapporteur. Uh, on promoting and protecting the right to freedom of opinion and expression, sent a letter to Russian authorities demanding a probe into Navalny's alleged poisoning. Uh, Kamard and Khan wrote that if proven, the allegations of Navalny's poisoning by the FSB constitute a violation of the right to life. Yes, uh, that's certainly true. The words, if proven, are pivotal because they underscore the following. Sanctions are premature given the allegations that the FSB was behind the poisoning of Navalny, have not yet been proven. In their letter, Colin Martin Khan provided a detailed timeline of events to the poisoning. Uh, okay, I don't know if I want to go through all this because I'm going to put the link in the description anyway. Um, so um, he was... Uh, in re returning to Moscow from a, a trip in um, to uh, Siberia, um, and on the flight he became violently ill. Uh, told the flight attendant he thought he had been poisoned. The pilot, uh, or uh, he, they, they made an emergency landing back at the airport that they uh, took off from, and Navalny was treated at a local hospital. The doctors there didn't find evidence of chemical substances in his system or poisons, but attributed the illness to a metabolic disorder, suggesting that he had a grand mal seizure coming from hypoglycemia after going into diabetic shock. Uh, Navalny was put into a medically induced coma and treated with atropine, which is used to counteract certain nerve agents and pesticide poisoning, but the doctors claimed the reasons were unrelated to poisoning. Um, so you know, they, they say... Uh, they didn't find any poison in his system, um, but they gave him some treatment anyway. Uh, at the urging of his family, Navalny was medevaced to Berlin for uh, treatment at a uh, facility that specialized in um, you know, uh, that sort of treatment. Uh, you know, the uh, Russian government uh, gave him permission to do that. Um, 
At the Berlin Hospital, do it all, doctors diagnosed Navalny with poisoning with a cholinesterase inhibitor. Um, the German government said the toxicology tests had proven that Navalny had been poisoned with uh, this uh, Novichok uh, agent, albeit at a very low concentration. Um, in their report, Kalmard and Khan from the UN uh, Human Rights uh, Office uh, claimed that the Russian government was a likely culprit in the poisoning because they were the only government in the world which had developed Novichok poison. Uh, other experts have suggested that Novichok poison had been obtained by Western Secret Services in the 1990s. Uh, in a video leaked by Bellingcat, uh, a British agency funded by the National Endowment for Democracy, the U.S.'s uh, above-board uh, uh, agency for subverting foreign uh, governments, uh, which you know, took over the undercover functions of the CIA to a large extent. Um, so Bellingcat uh, leaked a video uh, where Navalny, po posing as an aide to the head of Russia's Security Council, uh, speaks to Konstantin Kudryavtsev, who was allegedly then involved in a cleanup operation at uh, the uh, Omsk uh, hospital. Uh, Kudryavtsev, whatever, stated that the FSB added a bit extra of the poison in the attempt to kill Navalny. Um, and the plan would have worked if Navalny's flight had not made an emergency landing. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's supposed to be an extremely deadly poison. So, uh, it seems pretty unlikely that if they had tried to kill him with it, they wouldn't have given him enough to kill him. And you know, why would you kill somebody by poisoning him anyway? I don't get it. Um, the authenticity of the video remains in question, given the fact that an FSB agent would not normally divulge a secret operation over the phone. Uh, the FSB, the Russian intel intelligence agency, the equivalent of the FBI in the United States, dismissed the Bell Bellingcat video as a fake, uh, etc. Um, the Kremlin considers the Navalny poisoning to be an amateurishly staged performance aimed purely to further sanctions against Russia, which you know, is exactly what happened. Sanctions against Russia were increased after this alleged poisoning. Um, Russian President Vladimir Putin accused Navalny of being a foreign agent and said that if Russian special services had wanted to kill him, they would have finished it. Um, wait a minute. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, well, let's. Okay. So, so we don't know what happened to him back then. Uh, but let's get into talking about uh, what we know about who Navalny was and what his role was in Russia. During his confirmation hearing, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken called Navalny a voice for millions and millions of Russians, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Navalny, however, has the support of only around 2% of the Russian populace. He has distinguished himself from other figures in Russia's quote-unquote liberal opposition, which promotes free market policies and privatization through his determination to integrate the far right into the anti-Putin opposition. Navalny used to be a member of the Organizational Council of the Russian March, an annual event organized by the country's fascist and far-right forces. In 2007, the pro-U.S. party Yablako, uh, Yablako, uh, sorry, uh, that's Russian for Apple, uh, but that's the name of a political party that uh, uh, former world chess champion Gary Kasparov, a well-known uh, right-wing figure in 
Russian politics, although I guess he lives in the U.S. now, um, was involved in. Uh, so, uh, and Navalny was involved in that party too. Uh, Yabloka kicked him out because of his sympathies with the far right and because he had plotted against the party's leaders. Uh, Amnesty International stripped Navalny of prisoner of conscience status due to his history of hate speech. Um, Amnesty obtained a series of YouTube videos Navalny produced in the early 2000s in which he referred to immigrants from the Caucasus as cockroaches. In one clip, he's featured behind a table with a pistol, uh, a shoe, and a fly swatter and states that everyone knows we can use a fly swatter against flies and a shoe against cockroaches. Navalny then asked, but what happens if the cockroaches are too big and the flies too aggressive? When a person dressed in black comes screaming toward him, Navalny shoots the man uh, with a uh, pistol. Um, a dead body appears. In that case, I recommend a pistol. Another video has Navalny dressed up as a dentist who says his job is to root out cavities, by which he means uh, immigrants. Um, when neo-Nazi skinheads come on the screen, the Nazis giving the Hitler salute and war criminals hanged at Nuremberg, Navalny states, these aren't real specialists. You need to precisely and firmly deport. Uh, and those uh, YouTube videos are still up. Uh, so Navalny wound up running for president. Um, and he wanted to... Uh, basically keep uh, keep brown people out of Russia, uh, more or less. Um, wanted to introduce a visa, visa regime for immigrants from the Caucasus, but not Germany, um, stating that those who have a rich country should be more welcome as visitors. Um, so he, he developed a reputation as an anti-corruption uh, journalist, uh, broke stories about the corruption of uh, members of the Russian political elite. Uh, but um, you know, uh, there's, I mean, first of all, uh, there's issues with you know, who put him up to this and uh, fed him uh, this information. Um, and secondly, it turns out that uh, uh, there's evidence that he uh, is corrupt himself. Um, Navalny defines himself as a market liberal and for, has for years advocated for greater freedom for capitalist markets and the opening of trade and easing of government regulation. So basically, uh, you know, much more of a neoliberal in the vein of uh, Boris Yeltsin, certainly than uh, Vladimir Putin is. Um, okay, and he did sort of opportunistically uh, adopt some of the policies uh, promoted uh, in the West by Bernie Sanders, such as uh, increasing the minimum wage. Um, it should be lowering the retirement age, I guess. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there, he's never uh, taken down or apologized for those uh, racist videos. And, uh, you know, he has this history of collaborating with the Far right. Um, besides his neoliberal economic program, Navalny has endured him, endeared himself to the West by opposing Russian military interventions in Syria and Ukraine. Uh, he also promoted regionalist and separatist tendencies, which, if successful, would contribute to the destabilization and weakening of Russia. Okay, so uh, regarding Navalny's own possible corruption, uh, he was convicted uh, in uh, the early 2010s of theft of $500,000 from a state-owned timber company. Um, he received a, a fine for that and was initially going to be uh, sentenced to prison, but uh, he got probation instead. Um According to the prosecution, Navalny partnered with director uh, Petr Ofitsarov of, of uh, Forest Products uh, Corporation, uh, blah, 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 uh, in order to illegally harvest uh, 10,000 cubic meters of timber valued at more than $500,000 on state forest land. Um, Uh, 
uh, in December 2014, Navalny was uh, again convicted of uh, fraud. Uh, he and his brother Oleg were convicted of uh, defrauding the cosmetics company, Yves uh, Rocher. Um, After the verdict came out, Eve Rocher, the company, issued a statement stating, suspicions of fraud on the part of Navalny, the Navalny brothers against private companies have been confirmed by three judgments, and this case is therefore closed, uh, et cetera. Um, and then there was a third uh, fraud charge. Um, so, you know, if these charges are, are true, <laughs> The idea that he's he was in prison because he's a political prisoner is uh, hardly accurate. Um, okay, so what about this uh, uh, backing by the West? Um, is he a U.S. and British proxy? Well, the answer appears to be yes. Uh, Navalny's ties to the U.S. were established in 2010 when he served as a World Fellow at Yale University, whose graduates played prominent roles in the 2014 anti-Russian coup in Ukraine and other U.S.-backed color revolutions. Navalny was recommended by for the program by Garry Kasparov, the Russian chess champion and prominent opponent of Vladimir Putin. Um, since his stint at Yale, Navalny has allegedly received more than $5 million from the uh, National Endowment for democracy. He admitted to taking NED money in 2007 and 2008 in his blog and identified himself in his Yale World Fellows profile as a co-founder of the Democratic Alternative Movement, a youth group that received NED funds. And again, uh, just to remind you, if you don't know, the National Endowment for Democracy is sort of the U.S.'s uh, above board, overt uh, version of the CIA. They exist primarily to not not promote democracy, but to undermine uh, other countries' uh, governments. Uh, so you know, the opposite of democracy, interfering with their, you know, violating their national sovereignty. Um, predictably, some of the anti-government protests that Navalny has organized have been financed or supported by the U.S. embassy. Um, The Navalny scandal appears to have been generated as part of a color revolution psychological warfare operation whose main contours were laid out in a 2019 RAND Corporation report overextending and unbalancing Russia. It recommended an array of measures from encouraging domestic protests to providing lethal aid to Ukraine to undermine Russia's Im image abroad for weakening and destabilizing Russia. High priority was placed on administering sanctions, which Navalny, Navalny has been used to expand. Um, Navalny also has only limited support within Russia compared to Putin, who helps to restore Russia's economic sovereignty, follow the Yeltsin era, and has also stood up for Russian interests around the world. Um, okay, so, so that's a little bit about who Navalny is. Um, what about West's uh, reaction? Um, Let's talk about that a little more. So, uh, you know, West's uh, reaction to Navalny's uh, death is very similar to that of, you know, mainstream Western uh, liberals like, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders. Sanders said, Alexei Navalny courageously exposed the corruption and lies of Putin's authoritarian regime. Now Putin has him killed for it. The Russian people deserve uh, better. Um, well, unlike Cornell, um, Bernie uh, just outright alleged uh, without any evidence that uh, Putin killed Navalny. Uh, so, so Cornell didn't do that. Um, Bernie Sanders did. But, uh, you know. Still, uh, Cornell refers to him as a courageous political prisoner and uh, mentions in the same breath as people like Mumia Abu-Jamal Abu and Leonard uh, Peltier. Um,
Okay, I, I thought uh, Nick from uh, Revolutionary Blackout Network had um, some uh, good commentary about uh, you know, the West's uh, reaction uh, to uh, Navalny's death. Um, well, uh, whether Navalny was a, a neo-Nazi, uh, he certainly had far-right sympathies and collaborated with neo-Nazis on uh, many occasions. Um, so, uh, and you know, I said those awful racist things about Muslims. Uh, so anyway, let, let's listen to what Nick had to say because uh, you know he really nailed it as far as uh, Western hypocrisy. Alexei Navalny, the CIA propped up opposition to Putin is now dead. Now all the hawks against Russia are reacting exactly as we expected them to, claiming that Putin killed Navalny because he was terrified of him. Despite what you hear from the corporate media in the West, Alexei Navalny is a fringe political figure who struggles to get 2% support in Russia. The reason Alexei Navalny never became popular in Russia is because he's a white supremacist who attended countless neo-Nazi rallies. Alexei Navalny has openly called for deporting all Muslims from Russia, which is way worse than anything Donald Trump said, but liberals still support Navalny. Americans in the West need to understand how much Russia hates white supremacists and Nazis like Alexei Navalny. Russia is the country who defeated the Nazis, by the way, and they did so while losing tens of millions of people. Because of this history, this is why Russia punishes Nazis like Alexei Navalny, while Ukraine celebrates them and gives them government roles. Because of Alexei Navalny's extreme ideology, he never stood a chance of being a credible opposition to Putin in Russia. But what does it say about the West that they embraced him as a champion of democracy? All the liberals in the West that are melting down by the death of this white supremacist scum Alexei Navalny hasn't said a word about Julian Assange, who the United States is actively trying to kill. These are the same people who didn't say a goddamn thing when prominent Palestinian journalist Shireen abdul Akla was brutally murdered by the Israeli government and the Israeli crimes was covered up by the Biden administration. The biggest cowards in the world are the people who spend all their time spreading lies about the enemies of the United States instead of holding our own government accountable. So, so yeah, uh, I mean, it's just totally hypocritical. Uh, you hear far more from uh, many Western politicians about uh, the death of Navalny, which they blame without evidence on the Russian government, you know, on Putin specifically. Uh, and, you know, they don't say a damn thing about uh, the uh, 30,000 or so uh, deaths of innocent people in Palestine, or if they do, uh, they um, more or less justify it, or uh, if they're politicians, they vote to send Israel more money to uh, continue their genocide with. Um, now, Cornell West uh, certainly hasn't done any of that, um, and you know, he has actually um, mentioned uh, the assassination by Israel of uh, American, Palestinian American journalist uh, Shireen Abu Akhle. Um, however, uh, he hasn't said anything about um, uh, Chilean American journalist uh, Gonzalo Lira, um, who recently died in a Ukrainian prison. And you know, we know for a fact, um, or at least, you know, he said uh, he was you know, tortured by the Ukrainian government um, you know, for his opposition to Ukraine's um, you know, persecution of ethnic Russians in Ukraine and, uh, and their perpetuation of this, uh, uh, their uh, willingness to go along with his proxy war against uh, Russia. Um, 
And so Cornell West, uh, I'm guessing he has no idea who uh, Gonzalo Lira was. Um, and Gonzalo Lira certainly was a problematic figure in a lot of ways. He had many uh, right-wing opinions, but he was a staunch uh, opponent of uh, the uh, war in Ukraine. Uh, and he, you know, he was killed for it. Um, but you know, no word from Cornell West about him, probably because he has no idea who he is. And, and you know, it's just, um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of examples of this from him where uh, that suggests that uh, for someone who's been you know, uh, a, a radical political activist uh, throughout his adult life, um, you know, Cornell West just isn't especially knowledgeable about foreign affairs. Um, you know, issues having to do with race in the United States are kind of his wheelhouse, and he's uh, written a lot of brilliant stuff about that. But um, you know, he he doesn't really understand what's going on in Russia. Uh, you know, has some but not great understanding of uh, the Ukraine situation. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, it, it just uh, you know, not only lacks detailed knowledge of foreign affairs, but maybe as uh, uh, Nick from the Revolutionary Blackout Network has suggested, uh, you know, a lack of intellectual curiosity about things that uh, people point out to him, uh, hey, you're, you're misinformed about this. Um, Okay, you know, case in point, uh, there's kind of both sidesism about uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict that he displays here. As we reject vicious Russian imperialism in solidarity with our Ukrainian brothers and sisters, he says, we must still confront the white supremacist and male supremacist face of American fascism at home. Um, so, you know, uh, although he's opposed to the uh, Ukraine war and you know, calls it you know, a, a U.S.-backed uh, you know, proxy war uh, to undermine Russia. He's uh, claiming that Russia was motivated by um, imperialism in uh, inv invading Ukraine. And you know, I'm not going to get into a detailed explanation of uh, what's wrong with this uh, perspective, because I've talked about that on many occasions, but just briefly, basically, um, Ukraine was um, persecuting ethnic Russians relentlessly ever since 2000, the U.S.-backed uh, right-wing coup that took place in 2014, um, they have uh, violently attacked uh, you know, the, the Donbass region. There's been an ongoing uh, sort of off and on civil war there ever since uh, 2014. It greatly escalated uh, in February of 2022, uh, just uh, prior to the Russian invasion. Also that month, uh, um, Vladimir Zelensky uh, stated that he thought Ukraine should acquire nuclear weapons. He, uh, he reiterated Ukraine's intention to uh, uh, try to join NATO. Um, and he and various other uh, figures uh, prominent in Ukraine and Ukrainian politics uh, uh, expressed a desire to uh, invade and try to retake uh, Crimea. And uh, just prior to Russia's invasion, uh, allegedly there was intelligence uh, by uh, gathered by either Russian intelligence services or uh, those in um, uh, the Donbass republics, uh, Donetsk and Luhansk, um, indicating that Ukraine was poised to launch a ground invasion of the Donbass uh, region. And there were tens of thousands of uh, 
Ukrainian troops gathered on the border of that region, and uh, uh, intelligence apparently suggested that uh, they had plans to invade in early March, um, and they had already dramatically escalated their shelling of uh, the Donbass region, which uh, was uh, you know, killing lots of innocent people. Uh, so, um, so anyway, uh, you know, uh, the Ukrainian republics, uh, which had you know, previously declared their independence, and that's uh, why they were being attacked, um, requested Russia's help in fending off uh, this assault. Uh, and that was one of the motives for Russia's invasion. Um, and now, he doesn't go as far as some others and, and claim that uh, there wasn't provocation of uh, Russia in terms of, uh, you know, uh, NATO expansion and so on and so forth. Uh, but, you know, in my estimation, he's not all that well informed about this issue. Um Here's another example of uh, him not knowing what he's talking about on a, a matter of uh, some importance. Uh, he said back in 2011, Ronald Reagan was a freedom fighter in terms of supporting our Jewish brothers and sisters in the Soviet Union and opposing vicious forms of communism. Um, Ronald Reagan was not a freedom fighter in any way, shape, or form. Um, now, granted, Cornell West, uh, uh, you know, just to put this in a little bit of context, uh, Cornell West was very opposed to Ronald Reagan, but you know he's paying him a compliment here that's uh, quite undeserved, um, uh, and expressing. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of criticisms you could make of uh, uh, the Soviet Union, uh, but uh, you know, he's uh, really uh, displaying some. Uh, rapidly anti-communist uh, sentiments here. Um, you know, uh, Russia, uh, or excuse me, the Soviet Union, uh, you know, despite its flaws, it um, uh, <laughs> defeated uh, the Nazis in World War II, did more to do that than any other country. It uh, provided the uh, Russian and other uh, people in the Soviet Union with a you know, much higher standard of living than they had had uh, prior to the Russian Revolution. Uh, they supported uh, freedom struggles around the world, such as uh, in Cuba and Angola and uh, so forth and, and so on. Um, and Ronald Reagan, on the other hand, um, like, you know, he went, Reagan, Reagan was a rabid anti-communist who uh, you know, violently attacked um, you know, regimes all over the world and movements all over the world that were pushing for um, you know, uh, power for the working class and uh, justice for the working class. So, for example, um, he, for many years, funded the so-called Contras in Nicaragua, who were um, former, um, for the most part, uh, National Guardsmen under the dictator Anastasio Somoza, who uh, ruled Nicaragua with an iron fist for uh, decades, uh, and they they were um, trying to overthrow the uh, Sandinista government of Nicaragua, which uh, overthrew the Somoza dictatorship in 1979, and were you know the democratically elected government of Nicaragua. Um, so. Uh, yeah, you know, opposing vicious forms of communism, meaning uh, supporting groups that tortured and murdered uh, innocent Nicaraguan people, uh, you know, same in you know, El Salvador and uh, various other places all over the world. Uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, you know, like uh, Joe Biden, like George Bush, like Donald Trump, uh, etc., <laughs> you know, was not in any sense of the word a freedom fighter. And nor did he do anything particularly good in terms of foreign policy. Uh, I guess the only exception in Reagan's case was uh, he negotiated uh, arms control treaties with the Soviet Union. So, you know, we can give him props for that. But uh, for in terms of most anything else, no. 
uh, you know, Cornell, you don't you don't got to hand it to Ronald Reagan for what you're saying here. Uh, one thing I should uh, mention, uh, at least briefly, is that a lot of people are still trying to blame uh, Peter Dell for uh, Cornell West's uh, missteps. And uh, there's just no way in which uh, this is accurate. Um, you know, Peter Dell left Cornell West's campaign months ago. Uh, he, of course, is of uh, Middle Eastern uh, descent, I grew up in Lebanon and, uh, you know, is certainly very sympathetic to and affected by uh, the Palestinian uh, situation, uh, the ongoing genocide uh, in Palestine. And, uh, you know, just um, like a lot of us was really stressed out by what was happening and uh, you know, said basically, um, you know, it just was in not something he could handle emotionally to continue managing Cornell West's uh, campaign. Um, and so he says, after Cornell West's eulogy of Alexei Navalny, I won't hold my breath for an apology from Jimmy Dore and others who blamed me for West's decisions. As you can all now see, uh, Dr. West has his own mind and makes his own judgments from leaving the Greens to praising Harlan uh, Crow, uh, the uh, uh, right-wing billionaire who initially uh, was going to give uh, a campaign donation to uh, Cornell West before people uh, persuaded Cornell West that that was uh, you know, not a good idea. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know... But, uh, Peter Dow didn't encourage uh, Cornell West to leave the Greens. Uh, Cornell West, uh, you know, left the Greens of his own ac accord. You know, uh, abandoned his Green Party campaign to run as an independent. Uh, in the process, uh, you know, sacrificing a lot in terms of uh, potential ballot access, and um, now he's just kind of torpedoing his campaign by putting his foot in his mouth. Um, And by the way, um, Peter never would have agreed with uh, his Cornell West stupid statement about Ronald Reagan that he made in 2011. Uh, of course, at the time, Peter was a dyed-in-the-wool Democrat at that time. Um, and you know, around 2020, he left the Democratic Party, started uh, you know, supporting third-party politics and being very critical of the Democrats uh, for... Um, you know, they're, they're, uh, many of their policies and for um, you know, not taking seriously all the allegations that Joe Biden had um, sexually uh, harassed and assaulted women. Um, you know, he was very turned off by that, and uh, he's been very much a supporter of the Green Party uh, since then. Um, now, uh, this video is about Cornell West, not uh, Peter Dow. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, there's certainly things you could criticize about uh, his views as well. But um, anyway, um, Cornell uh, West, after he um, was you know, criticized for this uh, post, Uh, and let me just show you some of the critical comments. Uh, Savvy Sabs of the um, uh, Revolutionary Blackout Network says, Dr. West, Alexei was a Nazi. He should not be in the same category as these political prisoners. Uh, Combate says, uh, Brother Navalny saw brother Muslims as brother cockroaches, but go ahead, brother. So he's making fun of um, uh, Cornell West's uh, habit of calling everybody 
brother and sister, which he says is uh, because that, you know, as a um, you know, radical uh, Christian, uh, he uh, wants to emphasize that he sees the humanity in everybody, regardless of uh, how much he might uh, disagree with them or what have you. But uh, as people have pointed out, he doesn't call Vladimir Putin brother. You know, uh, anybody that he really dislikes, you know, he, he stop, doesn't call them brother. Um, and I don't know if I have this uh, um, saved anywhere, but he made some comments about um, you know, the Revolutionary Blackout Network uh, comrades' criticisms of his uh, you know, statements about um, Navalny, uh, that uh, were just really offensive. Uh, he said something to the effect that um, uh, they and others were on Jimmy Dore's plantation, <laughs> which, uh, wow, it's quite shocking that somebody would uh, say something like that. Um, but, you know, in general, Uh, in general, I, I guess, uh, for one thing, if you don't know what you're talking about with regard to some issue, as Cornell West clearly didn't in the case of uh, Navalny and his role in Russia, you, know, you should keep your mouth shut about it until you do know what you're talking about. Um, Jill Stein, uh, you're running as the Green Party presidential candidate, now that uh, Cornell West has left, uh, abandoned the, the Green Party uh, where he was a, a candidate, uh, you know, she hasn't opined on Navalny or his death, uh, either because she was smart enough not to step in poo uh, as Cornell West did, or because she didn't see it as something worth talking about. Um, so I just don't understand why Cornell even felt a need to uh, say anything about uh, Navalny or his uh, death in the first place, um, you know, uh, given that, uh, you know, uh, he had these uninformed opinions about uh, all of that. Um, and <laughs> when you confidently assert things about an issue that you're ignorant about, uh, I mean, that, you know, that's just ar arrogant. Um but, you know, his reaction in the aftermath of that was even worse. You know, he was challenged on it. Uh, as you saw there, there were, uh, you know, he was ratioed on this tweet. There were way more comments than likes and um, critical comments in the um, retweets and uh, so forth. Uh, lots of those, too. Um, and, you know, he, he didn't respond to any of that. Uh, he didn't substantively respond in any context to uh, the criticisms of it. But what he did was he went on um, uh, Tim Black's uh, podcast to you know, basically whine about being criticized and uh, you know, personally attack uh, people who criticized him. Um, and, and he even lashed out uh, uh, people in the uh, Green Party. Uh, he said that uh, Jill Stein and Peter Dow and uh, Ajimu Baraka were untrustworthy. You know, he didn't elaborate and explain why he thought that. Um, but uh, you know, it's like he's pissed, uh, pitching a hissy fit about uh, having his uh, judgment and his views uh, questioned about this matter, um, and. Uh, that's just not the mark of a serious uh, intellectual or revolutionary when you do that. Uh, you know, especially if you're you know, running a progressive you know, third party or independent uh, campaign for political office, you know, uh, you got to have some humility. Um, and you know, that's just lacking here. Um Yeah, and I think this is such a problem on the left uh, here in the 
the United States and uh, you know other places in the West, although I'm most familiar with in the United States, is that you know people uh, just uh, think they know everything um, and express you know confidently express these opinions about issues, uh, whether it be you know, China or uh, Russia or Ukraine or um, you know whatever it is. Uh, where they don't know a whole lot, uh, and then you know when someone says, "Hey, wait a minute, <laughs> that that isn't true," and uh, you know uh, it's really problematic that you said this, it's offensive or whatever. Uh, uh, in this case, that uh, Cornell uh, compared uh, Alexei Navalny to people like Leonard Peltier, um, and you know if you react to that by lashing out. At the people who are saying, "Wait a minute, you know, think about this, look into it more." You know, if you're doing that uh, instead of looking into it more, um, <laughs> uh, you're not a political leader, man. You're just not. Um, so, my uh, summary of my judgment about this affair uh, you know, that I stated in the title: Cornell West steps in poo and doesn't clean his shoe. Uh, and, you know, it uh, stands. Um, you know, uh, he won't admit to his mistakes. Uh, he won't you know, look into things uh, um, where it's pointed out to him he doesn't know enough about them to be expressing opinions about them. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, given all that, uh, I certainly can't support his campaign for president any longer. Um, and you know, I, I hope someday he'll uh, <laughs> reflect on all this and uh, have a little better judgment. Uh, all right. Uh, that's all I wanted to share with you for today. Um, take care, and I will see you next time.